Hi there, welcome back. As you can see, I've received some goodies in the mail. And uh, this is the result of that uh, first video I did on designing the PC board for the uh, attenuator. And if you haven't seen that, I'll link that above. Have a look at that. It's uh, the preamble to this one. And the result is here. As you can see, I've got my greedy paws on it already. Couldn't resist. Now these obviously came from JLCPCB and uh, this video is sponsored by JLCPCB. It's always great when the stuff you used gets sponsored and the stuff you actually want. I ordered five, paid two bucks for that plus shipping. I actually chose normal shipping this time and surprisingly enough, it came pretty quickly. Now, here are the five PCBs, they're identical. My original idea was to put probably two side by side. The reason was I wanted this on a maximum width of 10 centimeters, which is the limit for this offer. And um, because these uh, Pi attenuators are really just a stack of exactly the same circuits along the way, and you make this as long as you want, obviously you have to take into consideration noise issues, but I decided to do four per board and the idea then was that I could use either two side by side or even on top of each other. As it happens, I've been rethinking this very carefully. And I think I'm only going to use one. And the reason is that I can choose the DB attenuation steps. If I choose them carefully, I can get a very wide range of attenuation from just four selections for switches. Now if you don't uh, recall, they are pi attenuators, 50 ohm load. In other words, the source sees exactly the same uh, impedance that it's expecting to on this side as it does produce on the other side. So you have 50 ohms in, 50 ohms out. That means that this one here then sees 50 ohms on this one and it produces 50 ohms out. I'm choosing 50 ohms because I want to just use this for the with a signal generator. But um, you add dB attenuation. So if I make this a 3 and a 6, I can choose 3, I can choose 6, I can choose 9 or nothing. So if I choose carefully, let's have a look at what possibilities I have on offer. I've actually decided on 3 dB, 6 dB, 12 dB, and 18 dB. Now, the reason I did this is I can get a huge range of uh, attenuation values. I can get, if I just choose the one, I can get three. I can get six. I can get the sum of the two, nine. I can get 12 if I just choose that one. 12 plus three, 15. Six plus 12 is 18. 18 plus 3, 21. You get the idea? I can go all the way, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, and 39. Now that's pretty flexible. And why 3? Why uh, divisible by 3 as well? 60 dB is half the power. So I can always just check very easily if I'm getting half the voltage. Um, so I can actually check these uh, divide by twos effectively every time I do a 6dB. So I can very simply check that this is working and know that every time I add that number of dBs, I'm halving the signal. So, of course, I can also get zero because that's the idea of this whole thing. You can bypass it and uh, you get zero dB. So this is what I'm going for, and I think that's what I'll stick to. Now, of course, without the switches, without the components, you get nowhere. I've got these switches. Now, these switches are actually double pole, double throw switches. It's on, off, on. Now, um, I am doing a prototype on this. I'm doing a test. So ultimately, ideally, I should use just on, off. And I should also use PCB mount switches, where, which these aren't really right for. But I have checked, and you can solder them very, very well on there. 
In fact, you can actually solder them from the underside. So these are going to do for this uh, first prototype. If this is fine, I probably won't build another one. I'll leave these as is because these switches are pretty good. So I've got my board. I've got my switches. I've got my BNC connector. Now this is not the best one that I could have got. I should have possibly, no, I couldn't. I actually wanted to put this on the board like that and make it a PC mount one, but that wouldn't fit in uh, the box that I've got. And I'll show you in a second. I also wanted to make sure that these were insulated from the chassis. I want everything to be completely floating as regards the chassis. So these are the only plastic ones I could get on Madeira. And this is going to have to do. And of course, the chassis is this thing over here. Now this was a square section of aluminium, which I had them cut this section off here. So I can now build everything onto this front panel here. And this front panel will then fit into the top under that uh, shelf, as I described in the previous video. I wanted to have a deeper one. They don't have the section available in the uh, dimensions I want. This is, I think, six and a half by six and a half. I've bought multiple sections of these. I'm hoping that I can do everything I want to do on this size. If I don't, I can always add things to the back. Certainly this little project is going to fit perfectly on the size because I cut them to 10 centimeter um, sections. I've also got a 20 centimeter section if I need something bigger. But the idea is that I use the same height of section of aluminium for all these projects that I intend to put under the shelf. And this one's going to fit perfectly there. So I'm going to now get on to the selection of the resistors to use on here. To work out the calculator values, you can do it mathematically, but I assure you that's definitely not something you want to get into. So you can look on the web for a pi attenuator calculator. You'll find a lot of sites that give it to you. I've chosen this one. This lelievre.com uh, happens to have a whole lot of RF tools. And what I do here is I put in 3 dB and generate. No, nope, you've got to put in the impedance as well. 50 ohm impedance, 3 dB. And there's our value, 17.615 ohms, 292.4 ohms. Now, the likelihood of getting those resistors is practically nil. So this will have to be made up of uh, parallel combinations, preferably two. We'll see how we get along. So that's for 3 dB. If I put in 6 dB, which is the other one I want, 37.35 ohms and 150.48 ohms. The other one I want is 12 dB, 93.24 ohms and 83.545 ohms. And then I put in 18 dB. And that's 195.4 3 and 64.4 ohms. Now, those values, R1, is that resistor there, the top of the of the pi, and R2 are equal resistors here, R2, R2. And it also gives you the return loss for these particular values, but that's not really that important to us. However, if we tried something silly like, let's try a uh, 3dB one, I could also say, right, I don't have these resistors, so if I use, say, well, 33 is 2 in parallel, what's that come to? 16.5. And I'm not going to get it 292, so let's call it 270. For example, that's going to be way off. I calculate. The actual dB value is pretty close, 3 dB, but my return loss is not as good as the previous one. So this does not have to be exact, but you should try and get it as close as possible. So we've got the values now. The next step is pull out the SMD resistors and try and find combinations to make up these values. I've already detected that I'm needing some here. For example, with 3 dBs, I need a very low resistor. I think the lowest one I've got is uh, 33. So we'll just have to see how close I can get it. Now to actually select the resistors that I'm going to use, I um, went into the stock that I had 
of SMD resistors. And uh, instead of looking for the optimum ones, I first saw what I had available. So I have found that with the exception of three cases out of eight resistor values, I've had to use three resistors to get pretty close. Now I'm probably trying to get too close, I guess, but I just, this is an experiment, so why not? So I've already found a problem with my board. I've made provision for two resistors in each case, so I'm going to have to piggyback some of those SMDs on top of each other because I don't have any more pads. Therefore, version 2 is going to have three pads per resistor value. This is why you do prototypes. So here we have another calculator. This is called the Omni Calculator, your life in 876 calculators. Well, the advantage of this is that it allows you to me measure the uh, parallel resistance for multiple resistors, not just two. And if I take, for example, R1 of 6 dB, which is supposed to be 37.35, I find that if I use a 47, a 220, and a 1K, I get 37.28, which is damn near enough. I mean, this is getting, this is splitting hairs, okay? The point is, I want it to be quite accurate. It is an experiment, it is a prototype, and I want to see what else I need to do to come up with a final design. So, design flaw number one, or rather design lesson number one, make provision for three resistors per value so you can actually solder them in comfortably. Alternatively, I could go to um, go to the web and buy closer resistors. I know you can get some you get a hell of a lot of values that I don't have. Um, but that becomes a problem because, as I've said repeatedly, I live on an island. And the disadvantages of living where I live, which is on the island of Madeira, is that everything takes quite a bit longer to get here than it would to get to where you probably are. So yeah, we uh, live with what we have. Sunshine and slow deliveries. Let's get on to this. Now that the resistor's all in place, we have to just check them. Now, you're not going to measure the values you expect because the uh, whole network is now connected basically to each other through ground. So the trick is just connect to ground over there, test one and the other, and you should get about the same. Now there, you probably will get close to the uh, value you expect, 17.4. But don't forget that this 17.3, you're actually measuring the resistance, the parallel resistance that you've got there from those three, which should give you 17.8.
but you're also measuring the resistance that that one there is creating through ground to that one there and then back to here. So just try and get the same to ground, for example, from both sides, and there you probably will be okay. That again is not going to indicate much, but we can see that those 56.6, 56.6, 51, 51, and uh, they are about the same from both legs. So I think we've got the resistors done. As you can see, quite a bit of flux that needs to be cleaned off. But before I do that, I'm going to put the capacitors in there. I'm not sure what value I used in the last one, which has served me well. I think it was, I mean, I could do all the calculations, but I think it was 100 uh, nanofarads. Let me just check. Yeah, it was 100 nanofarads. So I'm going to put, say, a 220 nanofarad in there on both sides. And I'm going to use the SMD ones as well, just to make it, uh, actually to make it more uniform and easier to work with. I've actually decided to put in 470 nanos, which will make sure that we don't, um, we don't get roll off. Not too critical. And now we are ready for the switches, but before putting the switches, I'm just going to clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol and we should be there. We can test it. Brilliant. I've just tacked them on to the one side because I think these will be much easier to do from the underside, which is what I'm going to try. And here it is, all pretty and done. This came out really nicely. I like it. If you look at the underside, all you've got is the solder connections for the switches. So the next thing to do is to test it. And what I'll do is I'm going to feed in a signal and uh, check on the scope if we get the attenuations that we expect. We should get 3, 6, 12 and 18 and then obviously the sum of those. So let me set this up and we can test it and see what's what. So here's the setup we've got now. I've got um, a signal coming in from the signal generator, goes into the input, comes out of there, straight to the scope. It's got a uh, T connection there with a 50 ohm termination. Remember, we're trying to determine whether it works for a 50 ohm line. And we've got a signal over there. Now, what are the levels? What I've got coming out of here is a 450 kilohertz sine wave. Amplitude is 1 volt RMS coming out of there. I have all the switches on bypass mode, in other words, zero attenuation, and I'm actually getting 912 millivolts over there. Now, I'm not sure what it is, but I'm going to try something. I had a really, really shitty cable over there that was um, losing quite a bit. So I've got the same 1 volts RMS there, and now we've got 999 millivolts RMS there. So we're in business. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to flick through the various selections, okay? Let's start at 3dB. We've got 0.701, so we should be getting 0.707. That's damn close enough. 6dB. 499, we should have 0.5, so damn close. 12 dB, 249, 250, that's exactly what it should be, 250. And 18 dB should be 125. If I give it a bit more oomph on there, it's 125. 
This thing is damn accurate. It's working beautifully. And obviously I can now add all sorts of things up like uh, this is um, 24 dB. This is 30 dB. It's 31.2 uh, millivolts you're seeing on there. This thing is not shielded, it's out of the box, and I don't see any noise. So that's working pretty well, and that's with 450 kilohertz. Let's see what happens. Well, obviously that happens. 1 volt RMS. Let's see what happens when we flick this thing to higher frequency. There's 1 megahertz. Try the 6 dB one. 0.5 volts. 0.51 volts. Let's go up here. 10.7 megahertz. This would be for aligning um, FM radios. 6 dB. 0.502. Bloody hell, that's nice. 12 dB. 256, just, well, it's supposed to be 250 millivolts. It's 256, 255. 18 dB. 131. I mean, this could be anything. This could be oscilloscope reading. 122. 122. This thing's going to do for me. I'm getting exactly what I wanted. And so, we left with the final question. What changes am I going to make? And there are a few. Let me show you. Well, this thing is working very well, but um, as it's a prototype, one is never happy. So the changes I'm going to make are, I'm going to make provision for three resistors for each set, as I mentioned earlier. Well, I won't have to piggyback some of those uh, SMD ones over there. I'll also change some of the orientation around following the advice of one of my viewers who's a hell of a lot more knowledgeable than I because of the grounding situation here. Although we haven't seen much uh, in terms of attenuation or noise, but hey, if you start getting to higher frequencies, you might as well prepare it for that. And um, the other thing is these connectors here. This is far too small for any kind of wire that you want to connect on here. Ideally, it should be coax. It won't fit there, so I've got to make these holes a lot more generous so that I don't end up with solder blobs. And other than that, I'll be ready to go. So I'm going to make the changes on, on the PCB uh, software. If I think of anything else along the way, I'll probably apply that as well. And I will probably, I say probably because I'm not sure, fitted into this already. I've marked off where these will go. These are the holes for the four switches. Whatever changes I make to the prototype, I shouldn't make any changes to the, the position of the switches. And because I want this to be fitted sort of against the back there, so I can add some shielding, I probably will continue to use these separated uh, BNC sockets. So that won't change either. I might even put it at the bottom because that's really where they're going. So I might actually do this. I might actually build this because obviously there's a weight involved until I get the new board and I would like to see this start coming together. If anybody's noticed, that thing is already down because I've got the, uh, the new ones, uh, the new brackets of these and I'm going to be putting it in one of these so they all look the same. This is obviously not as tall. Um, so that is my dummy load and uh, speaker selector and the um, branch off to the, to the oscilloscope uh, setup. So I'll be doing those two together. I really am thankful that um, these things are so cheap and very, very easy to, to sort out and, and make changes on. I can now just simply take the old file of the uh, previous board make the adjustments I want, and then off it goes again, order another batch. And hey, if that thing comes with, uh, if for some reason I decide to make changes on that as well, I'll do it again. At two bucks a time, I can afford to be sloppy.
that's not what you should do really but um, one does tend to become a little bit of a perfectionist when you can afford it I hope this has been informative. I'll get back to you soon. There are a few more projects. I'm working on them, so I'll be continuing with those. There's a couple of pretty interesting ones coming up as well that uh, I haven't started yet, which you might find uh, informative. Oh, and there's something else. You may have noticed that um, I've got a new multimeter. This is a Bryman BM235. It's exactly the same model as the one Dave Jones on EV Block uh, personalized. Fantastic multimeter, actually. I bought this a couple of weeks ago because my fluke, my trusty fluke, that's been with me all the way from first year university, finally kicked the bucket. And I had to let it go. I mean, I tried to revive it a few times, but I got to a point where cleaning the contacts and everything else just didn't do it anymore. So I got this one. And... Um, I looked at it and it, it sort of, it seemed sort of, you know, sad by itself. So the Big Brothers arrived as well. This one is the BM869S, which is absolutely bloody fantastic. This one is very similar as far as reviews are concerned to the uh, Fluke 87 uh, V. It's, I haven't really tried it much. I got it today. This particular one came all the way from Asia. It came from Bryman itself in Taiwan. And it got stuck in customs. And it's been in customs for three weeks. And I got it today. So I'll be using that one as well. And I think that uh, with these two siblings, I'm probably well stocked with uh, multimeters for a long, long time. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Click like, subscribe to the channel, and click that uh, little bell icon so it reminds you when there's a new video. And also, if you want to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.